experiment time. Today I'll make a starter out of apples and try to bake a bread with it. How do you like them apples? How do you like them apples? Hi, I'm Soon and I'm a food geek. It's fall in Denmark and ripe, delicious apples are in abundance and cheap. Denmark is absolutely an apple country. So I heard that you can make a starter from fruits. People often talk about grape or pineapple starters, but how about an apple starter? Yeast is present in the air on fruits and your flour, and it makes sense that it doesn't have to be made from flour to be able to capture the yeast. But if it's going to be powerful enough to leaven a loaf of bread, remains to be seen. At least by me, I'm possibly late to the game when it comes to this. If it works, I'll post a recipe on my site that you can follow if you want to try it too. If you're new to this channel, I bake a lot of sourdough bread and I make delicious food from all over the world. If you want to see more of this content, please join me by subscribing and ringing the bell so you won't miss any future videos. So my process will be to puree the apples and leave the puree until it grows. Under the right circumstances, you can cultivate a starter in about five days, but in that case, you feed it. From what I read, you don't feed a fruit-based starter. So this will be very interesting. So when it comes to the formula for the bread, I looked up the hydration of apples and it's about 85%. So I will treat it as a starter with 80% hydration when I calculate how much water I need to add to my dough. Let's see if we get that far. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider joining my Patreon. You can also buy some merch, use the super thanks or use the links in the description for tools and ingredients. Those were the words. This is the experiment. First, I turn the apples into a puree. I slice about one kilo, two pounds of ripe sweet apples into eighths and put them in my blender. After I cut them, I proceed to blend the apples. <laughs> well, that was pretty dumb. You need a liquid or at least tiny pieces to blend something. I'll put them in my food processor instead. All right, that's more like it. Now back in the blender. That's a good puree. So I pour it into a wet jar and seal it up. Now it's Monday evening and I plan to bake Sunday morning. Every day I make sure to vent the jar. Thursday it grew a lot and it kept that height until Sunday. The smell by this time was very fall-like and kind of like beer. I gave it a good stir Sunday morning and prayed to the sourdough gods that it was ready for prime time. Then I mix my dough. 600 grams of bread flour. 150 grams of whole grain Ulan wheat. Any whole grain will do if you can't get that, but I wanted to use an ancient Nordic grain for my bread. 15 grams of salt. And I mix it up. I'm going to add 190 grams of apple starter. And 440 grams of water. If your bread flour can't be used at 80% hydration, you should lower the amount of water. On screen, I'll give you the different amounts of water to take it to the correct hydration. If you don't know the flour, start low. The dough shouldn't be stiff, but somewhat fluid. Note how the dough looks in this video. I leave the dough to rest for an hour to develop the gluten. Then I perform three sets of stretch and fold spaced out by 30 minutes.
the dough goes into a proofing container. I mark the container where the dough will have risen 25% and I put the dough in my proofer set to 30 degrees Celsius, 86 degrees Fahrenheit. After about three and a half hours at that temperature, the fermentation is done. It's a little longer than when I use my regular starter, but not slow. Want to hear a joke about paper? N never mind, it's terrible. Then I divide the dough into two equally sized pieces and pre shape them. And I let them rest on the counter for 20 minutes. Then I shape the first one into a boule, a round bread. I put it in the banneton. I shape the other bread into a batard, a long bread. and I put it in a banneton. I stitched the bottom of the bread to help create better oven spring. Then I put both loaves in the fridge until the next day, about 30 hours all in all. Then I heat my oven to 230 degrees Celsius, 450 degrees Fahrenheit with a Dutch oven inside. After about half an hour, I grab one of the loaves out of the fridge. I dust the bottom with rice flour to help it slide easily off the peel. Then I flip the dough onto the peel. I score the dough with a lam with a razor blade attached. And then I put the bread in the oven. I bake for 25 minutes and then I prepare the second loaf. I dust it. I flip it. I score it, and then I bake it. But first I need to take care of the first bread. I move it to the side. And then I add the second loaf. After 25 minutes, I take the first one out. And then I reveal the second loaf. Wow, that's some lovely oven spring. And then I brown that for 25 minutes. They're both looking gorgeous. Want to see how the crumb looks? Let me see how it smells and tastes. Mmm, delicious smell. Bready and somewhat nutty. No bitter notes at all. Let me try a taste. I'll put butter on half, but butter is like baking. It makes everything better. Mmm, mmm, good. That, that's a piece of delicious bread. Not sour at all, kind of sweet actually. The nuttiness comes out even more in the taste. I think I would enter this bread if someone had a bread beauty contest. Want to see the beauty shots? Holy smoke, Batman! It worked! And that amazing oven spring! Applesauce, bitch! Applesauce, bitch! 
I I'm sorry, I I'll tone down the antics. I just got excited, but it's pretty amazing. I guess you can probably make uh, your starter from many different edible things. You can even convert this one to a regular starter if inclined. If this is something that you'd like to try out, I've left a link in the description for the full recipe on my website. If you want to keep the starter going, feed it at one to four and it should grow again. I haven't tried it yet, so I don't know how long it'll take to peak, but I'll feed my apple starter and I'll post it in the comments when I know. So sometimes I share other things that I do and over the summer I've gotten into 3D printing and I got myself a Prusa 3D printer and it's incredible. So recently I printed this. <laughs> this is the rocket from the Tintin album Destination Moon. Yes, and it's giant. It's 1.1 meters or about three feet and seven and a half inches in freedom units. Pretty cool, huh? I hope you learned something today. See you next time.